From Hollywood, California, the Lux Radio Theater presents Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Lux presents Hollywood. It's one of the most beloved folk tales of all time, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Walt Disney made it into one of the greatest pictures of all time. And tonight, for young and old, we bring it to the Lux Radio Theater. A charming story, the delightful music that you saw and heard on the screen. Aiding in tonight's production and our guest of honor is Walt Disney himself. Conducting our music is Louis Silver. Mr. DeMille will step before the curtain in just a moment. But before he does, a word about the product that brings you this program, Lux Flakes. Lux Flakes have thousands of loyal followers all over the world because lovely women everywhere depend on these fine, gentle flakes to keep their things dainty. Their nice silk and satin under things get regular Lux care. Yes, Gentle Lux keeps nice things dainty and fresh, but it does more than that. It helps them stay new-looking longer. You see, Lux flakes have no harmful alkali to hurt delicate materials or fade colors. It's a good thing to remember that anything safe in water alone is safe in Gentle Lux. And now... Your host and producer. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Christmas greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. One year ago, almost to the day, Walter Elias Disney was here in the Lux Radio Theater telling us about a picture he'd just completed called Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. It was the first feature-length animated picture ever created. Into it had gone three years of work, of hope and daring. Over two and one-half million drawings and the services of more than 500 artists. It was therefore a rather nervous Mr. Disney who spoke to us that night. If we had tied bells on his knees, he could easily have doubled for Santa Claus' sleigh. It wasn't Mike Fright, though, that attacked Mr. Disney. It was Premier Fright. For on the night following his Lux broadcast... He was giving the world its first glimpse into animated fairyland. In the tiny hands of a little lady named Snow White lay the reputation and the future of Walt Disney. How this picture was received is history. It brought laughter and tears from the children and grown-ups of every nation. Praise came from the pulpit, from statesmen, from the press to this unassuming man, whom even his switchboard operator called Walt. Harvard and Yale gave him honorary degrees, and the world its thanks. For to all of us, he recalled our childhood. We couldn't have chosen a more popular play for Christmas than Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, nor a more appropriate guest than Walt Disney. Later on, we'll hear from him. Now we hear his masterpiece. Let's dim the lights a little. Let's sit down and shut our eyes. Forget the world and just imagine. As our curtain rises and the Lux Radio Theater presents Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. In a far-off world, long, long ago, a kingdom built on a mountain high lifted its turrets flecked with gold into a sapphire sky. Land of enchantment, this domain, but ruled by a queen, black-hearted, vain, jealous of her beauty, and fearful lest there be another in her realm to prove more beautiful than she. Each evening, in a secret hall, she conjured up a spirit from the mirror on the wall. Slave in the magic mirror, come from the farthest space. Through wind and darkness I summon thee. Speak, let me see thy face. What wouldst thou know, my queen? Magic mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest one of all? Famed is thy beauty, majesty, but hold, a lovely maid I see. Rags cannot hide her gentle grace. Alas, she is more fair than thee. Alas for her, reveal her name. Lips red as the rose, hair black as ebony, skin white as snow. No, white. Your own stepdaughter and the princess of this realm. 
Where is this fair one now? In her tattered clothes by the witching well, she sings with a voice of a silver bell. Want to know a secret? Promise not to tell. You are standing by a witching well. Make a wish into the well. That's all you have to do. And if you hear it echo, I frighten you? Who are you? I am prince of another land. I've ridden far, hoping for the day when I'd find one fair as you. Oh. Please, don't run away. Now that I've found you, here's what I have to say. One song, I have but one song. One One heart tenderly beating, ever entreating, constantly true. One love that has possessed me, one love thrilling me through. One song my heart keeps singing. my wishes in this matter, Master Huntsman? I do, Your Majesty. Tomorrow, as the shadows fall at dusk, take her far into the forest. Find some secluded glade where she can pick wildflowers. Yes, Your Majesty. And there, my faithful Huntsman, you will kill her. Kill her? Your Majesty, little princess. Silence. You know the penalty if you fail. Yes, Your Majesty. Kill her or die yourself. And to prove that you have done your part, bring back this casket, huntsman, and in it, Snow White's heart. <laughs> We have enough wildflowers now, don't you? Enough for a long time. Perhaps forever. Oh, what a lovely place this is. So quiet and peaceful. But I think we'd better leave now. It's growing late, Master Huntsman. See how the shadows fall. Long and slender. Master Huntsman, why do you stare at me like that? What's wrong? Come here. But I don't... Here. Look well around this place you love. That look will be your last. I can't. I can't do it. Forgive me. I beg you, Your Highness, forgive me. Why? I don't understand. She's mad. Jealous of you. She'll stop at nothing. But, but who? The queen. The queen? You must run away, child. Far away. Run and hide and never come back. Hide in the woods. Anywhere. But go. Go. 
Listen, Ham. Uh, uh, Ma'am? Uh, what you want, Doc? Uh, I think it's time we it's smirk. Uh, Smith quirk. Uh, quit work. Uh, what do you say? Hooray! Come on, then. Let's go home. I ho I ho I ho It's home from work we go. I ho I ho I ho I ho I ho It's home from work we go. The lip light. Uh, light slip. Chimney The door's open, too. And the chimney's smoking. Something's in there. Maybe a ghost. Or a goblin. A demon. Or a dragon. What's that? What's that? What's that? <laughs> it's all right, man. What is it? Dopey's knees knocking together. Dopey, quit that. You hear? Quit it. There. I suppose there really is a dragon in the house. Mark my words, there's trouble brewing. Felt it coming all day. My corn's hurt. Gosh, that's a bad sign. Well, what, what do we do? do? Yeah. Well, let's sneak up on it. Yes, uh, we'll sneak up. Uh, 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 sneak up. Uh, uh, come on, hen. Uh, uh, men. Follow me. Don't be quick, that will you? Now, careful, men. Search every crook and nanny, uh, hook and granny, uh, crook and pan. Uh, search everywhere. Shh. Quiet. Look, the floor. It's been swept. Chair's been dusted. And our window's been washed. Gosh, our cobwebs is missing. Wait, wait, wait. The, the, the whole place is clean. Eh, there's dirty work afoot. The sink's empty. Hey, someone stole our dishes. They ain't stole. They're hid in the cupboard. My cup's been washed. Sugar's gone. Something's cooking. Mm, good. It smells good. Oh, look. Here, don't touch it, you fools. Might be poison. See? Witches brew. Look, look what's happened to our stable. Uh, table. Flowers. There's flowers on the table. Huh? Look, goldenrod. Look, easy uh, goldenrod. Oh, oh, don't do it. T -t -t Take them away. My doze. My hay fever. You, you know I can't stand no gold. gold. I can't. No, I can't. No, I can't. No. You gotta take it. You gotta take it. No, no. You gotta take it. You gotta take it. Who? 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 You crazy fool. Fine time you picked a sneeze. Well, I couldn't help it. I, I can't tell. When you gotta, you gotta. And I gotta. <laughs> I gotta. No, I can't no, stop it. No, 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 you better hold, hold him tight. I got you. I got you. I got I got you. 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 I it's in this room right now. It's up there. Yeah, upstairs in the bedroom. Uh -huh. One of us has got to go down and chase it up. Uh, 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 up, down. Well, who's it going to be? I'm asking for volunteers, men. Happy? What about you? Uh-uh. Bashful? Uh-uh. Sleepy? Uh-uh. Grumpy? Heh. <laughs> Sleazy? With my hay fever, dough. So you won't go, eh? Well, that leaves... Um, um, here, Dopey. <laughs> Take this lantern. Uh, don't, don't, don't be nervous. Don't be afraid. Go on now. Uh, up the snares, uh, the stairs. We're we're right behind you. Yes, yes. Right, right behind, behind you. you. Open the door, Dopey. Go on, go on. Open the door and stop shaking like that. Now, now. Look. Over there. Jiminy crickets. Gosh. Gee. What a monster. It's asleep. Covers three beds. Let's kill it before it wakes up. Which end do we kill? Shh. I'll take a good look at it. Uh, what is it? Why, it, 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 it's a girl. Oh, a girl. A girl. She's mighty birdie. She's beautiful. Just like an angel. Angel? <laughs> She's a female. And all females is poison. They're full of wicked wiles. What are wicked wiles? I don't know, but I'm against them. Shh. Not so loud. You'll wake her up. Oh, let her wake up. She don't belong here no how. Oh, oh, look out. She's moving. Oh, She's waking up. Oh, what do we do? Uh, hide. Oh. Too late. Oh, gosh. Why? Why, you're the little man. 
How do you do? I said, how do you do? How do you do what? Oh, you can talk. I'm so glad. Now, don't tell me who you are. Let me guess. You don't know us. Oh, but I know your names. I saw them written on your beds. Now, let me see. That little man over there, you're Doc. Uh, why, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Oh, and you, you're bashful. Oh, God. <laughs> and you, you're sleepy. Oh, how did you guess? And you, <laughs> you're sleepy. <laughs> And you must be... Happy, ma'am. That's me. Uh, and Mrs. Dopey, he, he don't talk none. You mean he can't talk? He don't know. He never tries. Oh, <laughs> that's too bad. But what's that bell around his neck? Oh, that? Oh, that, that that's a cowbell. Uh, we just put that there in, in case he, he ever gets lost. Uh, show her what you glue, uh, goo. Show her what you do when you get lost, Dopey. No, 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 no. The bell, the bell. That's right, that's right. See? He rings the cowbell. Oh, isn't that cute? Eh, cute. Ain't cute at all. Why, yes, it is. I say it ain't. Oh, you must be grumpy. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's who he is, all right. Hey, we know who we are. Ask her who she is and what she's doing here. <clears throat> yeah, uh, what are you and who are you doing? Uh, uh, what are you? Uh, uh, who are you, my dear? Oh, how silly of me. I'm Snow White. Snow White? The, the princess? princess? Yes. Well, well, my 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 dear princess, uh, princess, we're uh, we, we're honored. Yes, we're uh, we're mad as hornet, mad as hornet. No, we're not. We're as bad as cornet. No, no, as bad as. What was I saying? Nothing. Just standing there, sputtering like a doodle bug. Who's a butter like a spoodle dog? Uh, who's a uh, rudder? A gunner? Oh, oh, shut up and tell her to get out. Oh, please don't send me away. If you do, she'll kill me. Kill you? Who will? Yes, who'll kill you? My stepmother, the queen. The queen? The queen. She's yes. wicked. She's bad. She's bitey bean. She's an old witch. I'm warning you. If the queen finds her here, she'll swoop down and wreak her vengeance on us. Oh, but she doesn't know where I am. She don't, huh? No. She knows everything. She's full of black magic. She can even make herself invisible. Might be in this room right now. Stop it. Stop it, Dobie. She finds her here. We're lost. Lost? Not you, Dobie. All of us. Oh, but you'll never find me here. And if you let me stay, I'll keep house for you. I'll wash and sew and sweep and cook. Cook? Oh, you can, you can, can, yes. can you make lapple dumplings? Uh, lumple dumplings? Uh, apple dumplings. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, crapple dumplings? Yes, and plum pudding and gooseberry pie. Oh, gooseberry pie. Oh, 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 oh. Wait a minute, wait a minute, you crazy fools. You're going to lose your heads over a gooseberry pie? I say she goes. I say she stays. I say she goes. I say she don't. She does. She don't. She will. She won't. Does. Don't. Does. Don't. Does. Don't. Does. don't. Oh, you're a pot-bellied old hop toad. He's a, I'm a, who, who's a, a belly potted old flop load? A hop jelly, a flop. You, jelly. you're a flop belly. Don't jump. Oh, you got me doing it. I say she stays. Yes. How'd you like someone to twist your nose for you? Twist my nose? Oh, I wouldn't dare. Oh, 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 Think of the ghosts, the demons, the spooks. Yes. The dragons. Yeah, but think of our gooseberry pie. Yes, yeah, our, our gooseberry, gooseberry pie. pie. It'll taste mighty good. Raisins in the crust. Don't your bones can eat till you bust. Yeah. All right. We'll let her stay, but just till we get that pie. So ends the first act of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. During our brief intermission, let's take a flying trip from the land of fantasy to everyday life, to the home of our friends, the Browning family. It's the night after Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature is stirring. Except Dot and Midge. They're still up, having a little last-minute fun going over their presents. Gee, that music box is divine. Makes me think of moonlight and roses. Oh, wasn't Dad a lamb to give it to me? Yes, and wasn't Cousin Lou an angel to give me all this lovely lingerie? 
Oh, look at this nightgown, Midge. Isn't it sweet? Oh, it's adorable. Hold it up to you, Di. Oh, look at it float. It's a dream, all right. Are you going to wear it tonight? Oh, my goodness, no. I'm going to keep all these things for my best. Why, girls, aren't you ready for bed yet? We can't decide what to wear, Mother. At least Dot can't. She wants to hoard all her lingerie. <laughs> Why, the things are so beautiful, Dot. I'm surprised you don't start right in wearing that lovely nightgown. Well, that's just it, Mother. They're all so lovely. I'm afraid to wash them too often, so I'm going to kind of save them. <laughs> oh, nonsense, dear. They look beautifully. You just wear them and get the use out of them. But you will use Lux Flakes, won't you? Oh, I will, Mother. And I hope you make it one of your New Year's resolutions, too, Midge. I solemnly swear that I will use Lux. Always Lux and nothing but Lux. And I won't forget. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. <laughs> We'll hold you to that, Midge. And now, girls, get to bed. Good, Good night, night, Mother. Mother. Pleasant dreams. Yes, Dot can rest easy about her lovely new nightgown. And all her underthings, for that matter. Gentle Lux removes soil like magic and at the same time leaves colors and materials looking like new. As Mother Browning knows so well, anything safe in water alone is safe in Lux. That's because there's no harmful alkali to hurt delicate fabrics or fade colors. Use gentle Lux flakes for your own nice things to keep them dainty and new-looking longer. Now, here's our producer, Mr. DeMille. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs are ready to go on with their story. In our far-off world long, long ago, our princess fair with skin like snow was taken in as cook by the seven little men, by happy and bashful and sleepy and dark and sneezy and grumpy and dopey. She was taken in as cook in the house in the glen, and we hope she'll be happy with the seven little men. We hope she'll be happy as a young girl should with seven little men so kind and good, with happy and bashful and sleepy and dark and sneezy and grumpy and dopey, knock on wood. It's supper time now in the cottage, and as softly as they're able, the seven dwarfs with gentle grace all tip to the table. Oh, 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 just a minute, please. Supper's not quite ready. You'll just have time to wash. Wash? 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 I knew there was a catch to it. Why wash? What for? We ain't going nowhere. Ain't New Year. Oh, perhaps you have washed. Well, perhaps, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, perhaps we have. But when? When? Uh, when? Uh, yeah, you said when. Uh, why, uh, or, uh, last week, uh, month, uh, year? Uh, why, uh, 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 recently. Yes, yeah, recently. recently. Oh, recently. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Why, Doc? I'm surprised. <laughs> Come on, Bashful. Let's see yours. Oh, that will never do. And Dopey? My, my, my. This is worse than I thought. Now, all of you run right outside and wash yourselves. And don't forget behind the ears and under the beard. And comb your hair nice and neat. Go on now, or you'll not get a bite. I guess we gotta do it, ma'am. Uh, stand around the tub. We all gotta wash. <laughs> Women. Courage, ma'am. Courage. Uh, d d don't be nervous. <laughs> Gosh, it's wet. <laughs> oh, it's, it's cold, too. We ain't gonna do it, are we? Well, it'll, uh, it'll, it'll please the, uh, the princess. I say we take a vote. All right, we'll take a go, uh, a vote. All in favor, hey, si, uh, say aye. 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 Eh. What about Dopey? He don't count. Just two. <laughs> Listen, Dopey, if you're for pleasing the princess, ring your bell once. If you're not in flavor, uh, in favor, ring it twice. Understand? He understands. One ring for yes and two for no, eh, Dopey? Well, which is it? Uh, I told oh, you he didn't see? count. I think we ought to wash anyhow. Me too. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, well, it's beginning to work. 
But I'm warning you. You give him an inch and he'll walk all over you. Oh, don't listen to that old warthog. Come on now, man. Uh, how hard do you scrub? Will her whiskers shrink? Do you get in the tub? Do you have to wash where it doesn't show? Now, 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 now don't get excited. Here we go. Man, I, I, man, I, I vote that the best supper I ever had. Me too, Doc. Yeah, me too. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you liked it. I, I can still taste that pie. Oh. Gosh, I'm full. Right up to here. <laughs> What's that, Grumpy? I said, huh. <laughs> and your plate's lean, uh, clean. Well, you got to eat something after working all day. <laughs> <sighs> what do you say we... Go to bed. Not yet. Gosh, uh, no taint bedtime yet. I'm all set for a rambergy, a uh, banjerie, uh, 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 How about a song? Oh, yes. Oh, Go on, Happy. You're first. I like to dance and tap my feet, but they won't keep in rhythm. You see, I washed them both today, and I can't do nothing with them. Oh, <laughs> easy, thanks. A minute after I was born, it didn't have a nighty. So I tied my whiskers round my legs and I used them for a di 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 I chased a bullcat up a tree way out upon a limb. And when he got the best of me, I got the worst of him. <laughs> oh, that was fun. <laughs> now, now, you do something. Well, what shall I do? Tell us a story. Yeah, yes, tell, tell us a story. A true story. A love story. Well, once there was a princess. Was the princess uh, uh, you? And she fell in love. Was it hard to do? It was very easy. Anyone could see. But the prince was charming. The only one for me. Uh, was he uh, uh, strong and handsome? Was he, was he big and tall? There's nobody like him. Anywhere at all. Did he say he loved you? Did he steal a kiss? He was so romantic, I could not be Clock, uh, man. Mine for Ted. Uh, uh, time for bed. Oh, my. Good night. Good night, Good night everybody. Pleasant dreams. Pleasant dreams. magic mirror come from the farthest space. What would thou, queen? Magic mirror on the wall. Who now is the fairest one of all? Over the seven jewel hills, beyond the seventh fall, 
in the cottage of the seven dwarves dwells no white. There is one of all. No white lies dead in the forest. The huntsman has brought me proof. Behold her heart. No white still lives. The fairest in the land is the heart of a king. You hold in your hand. The heart of a pig? Then I've been tricked. The heart of a pig. A blundering fool. I'll go myself to the dwarf's cottage in a disguise so complete no one will ever suspect. I'll transform my beauty into ugliness, change my queenly raiment to a peddler's cloak, mummy dust to make me old, to shroud my clothes the black of night, to age my voice an old hag tackle. <laughs> To whiten my hair, a scream of fright, <coughs> a blast of wind to fan my hate, a thunderbolt to mix it well. Now begin thy magic spell. <laughs> Look. My hands. My voice. My voice. <laughs> a perfect disguise. And now a special sort of death for one so fair. What shall it be? Ah, the poisoned apple. Sleeping death. One taste of the poisoned apple and the victim's eyes will close forever in the sleeping death. <laughs> but wait, there may be an antidote. Nothing must be overlooked. My book of drugs. Ah, here it is. The victim of the sleeping death can be revived only by love's first kiss. Love's first kiss. <laughs> no fear of that. The dwarf will think she's dead. She'll be buried alive. <laughs> buried alive. <laughs> Thank you for saving me from the jealous queen. And bless the seven little men who've been so good to me. And, and make my dreams come true. Amen. Oh, yes. And, and please make Grumpy like me. He really isn't grumpy. He's a dear. And if he likes me, I can stay. I'll be so safe and happy here. Amen. Station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs have ended the second act of their adventures. They're not going away, though. They'll be here again in a very little while to continue telling you their story. That will be Act Three. Right now, in our intermission time, Mr. DeMille and our guest of honor are going to kind of talk things over. 
It's now my happy privilege to bring to the microphone one of the truly great men of the motion picture industry. Our distinguished guest is so well known that even to mention his name is utterly superfluous, like uh, gilding the lily. <laughs> well, thanks. Therefore, I will not mention his name. Uh-huh. Indeed, our, our guest is so modest and publicity shy that the mere mention of his forthcoming productions would send a shudder down his spine. Huh? Therefore, I'll refrain from any mention of them. Not even one? Instead, I'll, I'll let him interview me about my work. <laughs> I must say, this is rather unexpected. Oh, go on. Just ask me one little question about Union Pacific. What for? I know all about it. Now, Mr. Disney... Oh, <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, this, uh, this is Walt Disney. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. Mr. Disney is now at work on his next uh, feature. And the title uh, is Pinocchio. Yes, and now and that I have you... another name, Bambi. Bambi, yes. And now that and you... And then uh, Alice in Wonderland comes after that. Yes, 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 yes. And now, if you please, if you please let me say just a word about my, my picture. You know, I've gotten a whole new slant from Union Pacific. It has thousands of miles of railroad track, hundreds of Indians, hundreds of assorted actors, all in authentic costumes, thousands of... Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. You forgot Lux. Hundreds of boxes of Lux. Back in the unwashed 60s? Never. Mm. <laughs> no, but, but Lux takes an active part in every DeMille production. It's the backbone of the wardrobe department. It helps those costumes start out fresh and clean every morning. But picking up where you left off, Walt. Well, seeing how tremendous your pictures are, if I had to make Snow White over again, I'd have 700 dwarfs instead of only seven. seven. I'd have 70,000. And they'd all be giants except one. And he'd be taller than the rest. And instead of buzzards following the old witch... I'd have bombing planes. Now, for a climax, the Wicked Queen sells Snow White a poison fruit stand. I think I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, you're all wrong, Walt. What people want is more fantasy, sweetness, whimsy. Or just call it more Snow White. I think what I could do with Union Pacific if I had the Disney touch. My hero could be a steam engine, a prince in disguise. One day as he was passing the roundhouse, he heard a sweet voice singing... And looking over the garden wall, he saw a beautiful coal car. Yes, Mr. DeMille, that's colossal. <laughs> and though she was a shabby coal car, she was really a princess. Her name was Snow White. No, Mr. DeMille, if you do, I'll sue you. <laughs> they fall in love. <laughs> but the Great West in those days was a trackless wilderness. So one day, the handsome young locomotive says to his beloved, Baby, we gotta make tracks. <laughs> <laughs> well, in a crude way, that's the idea. But let's get serious, Walt. In making your pictures, do you follow any ironclad rules? Just one. Never do anything that somebody else can do better. That's why we ordinarily sidestep stories that could be done successfully in live action instead of animated action. And what about the future, as the art of animating human figures develops? <laughs> we'll never do Hamlet. And want to bet? <laughs> well, to be honest, our medium is so young and so unexplored and so fascinating that we have to guard against daydreaming. We have too many immediate problems. And I think my most immediate problem is to let you get back to the play. Uh, sit down then, Walt. But don't go away. Thanks, Mr. Mill. <laughs> we'll be calling on you a little later. <laughs> Once again, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And through black of night, the jealous queen, her deadly charm devised, flies toward the cottage in the glen as a witch disguised. In fiendish glee, she swears with every breath, the poisoned apple shall be Snow White's death. <laughs> it's morning. At the doorway of the cottage in the glen stand Snow White and the seven little men. Eagerly, they wait their turn in line because they know each one will get a kiss as off to work they go. Now, 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 don't forget, my, my dear. Don't forget what? The old queen's a sly one. She's full of witchcraft. So beware of strangers. Don't worry, Doc. I will. And I'll have dinner all ready for you when you get back. Now, here's your kiss. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> uh, uh, come on, men. Let's go. And now you, Bashful. Now, now, be awful careful. Because if anything should ever happen to you, I... Oh, <laughs> goodbye, Bashful. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, Dopey. Of course there's a kiss for you. <laughs> now, remember, Princess, be sure to... Wa- to wa- wa- do, 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 be sure to... Wa- 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 <laughs> <laughs> to watch out. I'll be very careful. 
<laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, princess. Now, who's next? Oh, Dopey, didn't I just say goodbye to you? Well, all right, but it's the very last one. <laughs> goodbye, Creepy. Goodbye, Happy. And goodbye. <clears throat> oh, Grumpy. <clears throat> now, 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 I'm warning you. Don't let nobody or nothing in the house. <clears throat> Why, Grumpy, you do care. Well, what if I do? Oh, Grumpy, here. <clears throat> goodbye. Bye. Goodbye, Bye. everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye, Dopey. What do you mean by... Hi-ho, <laughs> hi-ho, it's off to work we go. Hi-ho, 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 it's off to work we go. Good day, my pet. Uh, all alone? Why, why, yes, I am, but... The little uh, men are not here? No, they're not, but... Mm, mm, making pies? Yes, gooseberry pies. It's apple pies that make the men folks' mouth water. Pies made from apples like this one. <laughs> oh, it does look delicious. Yes, but wait till you taste it, dearie. <laughs> like to try it? Mm -hmm. Go on, go on, have a bite. What did you say, Bert? But why shouldn't I eat it? Because why? Go away! Go away, you pesky bird! Go away! Oh, oh, don't hit them, please. What did you say, Bert? What was it? What did they say? I don't know. Something about telling the little men. The little men. The beastly little men. Oh, oh, my heart. Let me come in and sit down. Oh, why, why, of course. Thank you, my pet. And now, because you've been so good to poor old Granny, I'll share a secret with you. This is no ordinary apple. It's a magic wishing apple. A wishing apple? Yes. One bite and all your dreams will come true. Really? Yes, girlie. Now, make a wish and take a bite. Oh, it looks awfully nice, but... Oh, there's a storm coming up. I'd better close the window. No, no, no. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Oh, there's plenty of time, my dear. Now, here's the apple, the wishing apple. There must be something your little heart desires. Perhaps there's someone you love. Well, there is someone. I thought so. I thought so. Old Granny knows a young girl's heart. Now, take the apple, dearie, and make a wish. I wish. I wish. That's it. Go on. Go on. I wish. For my prince to come for me. I wish that, that he'll carry me away to his castle, where we'll live happily ever after. Fine, fine. Now take a bite. Don't let the wish grow cold. There, that's it. Did it taste good, my pet? <laughs> oh. oh, I feel so strange. A breath will fill. Oh. A blood congeal. Oh. The sleeping death. She cannot stand. <laughs> now I'm the fairest in the land. <laughs> What's that? The little men return. Not a hurry. Away. Away to the farthest mountain top. So which is lair. Let them follow if they dare. <laughs> Which way did she go? There she is. Well, what you're standing here for? Up the mountain after her, men. Up the mountain. Oh, I see her now. I saw her in a lightning flash. Don't let her get away. Get up. Around that cliff. She can't get down. Be careful, men. She's desperate. Watch out for that rock. 
Rocks. The rolling rocks down off the hill. Shoot, kill us all. Get back, man. Get back. No, no, go on. Surround the old witch. Surround her. Look. Get the lightning. It's striking all around us. She fell. Fell right past her. I could feel the wind. Struck by lightning. Serves her right. Well, man, the wicked queen is dead. Yeah. Good riddance, I say. Stop. Rumpy, he's dark. Dark. He's happy. Good news, happy. And the lightning hit her and she fell off the cliff. She's dead. Well, why, why don't you cheer? I can't. Because Snow White, she's dead too. Oh. Well, there she is, ma'am. Don't she look pretty? Just like she wasn't dead at all. She she looks so pretty. I I can't think of burying her. No, we we can't bury her, man. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll build a a, a glass coffin, glass of gold, and we'll keep flowers around it all the time. Please. No golden rod. No. No no golden rod, Sneezy. Cause cause I'm I'm gonna sit beside her and watch her all the time. Put the, the violets here, Sneezy. Uh-huh. And the Sweet peas, there. Uh -huh. Dopey's daffodils, aside. Listen, man, somebody's coming this way. Yeah, riding a horse. What's he want? Tell him to go away. We can't do that. What? He, he's a prince. A prince? Sure. Look at his, look at his clothes. He's a prince, all right. Good morning. Good morning, morning Your Highness. Is there something wrong? There are tears in your eyes. Snow White is dead. And there she lies. Snow White is dead? Yes. Dead. And I've been searching far and wide. Here. Let me kneel at her side. Oh, princess. Ne'er was one so fair with snow white skin and raven hair. Oh, gosh! He's giving her a kiss. He loves her. Gosh! Then he's her prince. The one she spoke of in the story. Uh, never mentioned his name since. Did someone call? The princess spoke! Look, she's awake! Yeah, the spell is broke! She's gonna live! She isn't high! Only sleep! Just the charm! It was I who called. My prince. Well, Snow White, they thought you dead, these little men. I think I must have been. But then, you kissed me. Or did I only dream? Well, no dream, I did. I've searched for you so far. And I've been waiting for you so long. You knew I'd come? I knew. Someday. Someday. Goodbye. Goodbye, Bashful and Sleepy and Sneezy. Goodbye. Oh, please. Please don't be sad, little men. I'll be coming back again. You will? Once every year we'll meet. And I'll cook for you, too. And I'll make your house neat. Oh, Goodbye. 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 That prince, he better treat her right. And
Toby say goodbye to lovely Snow White and her fairy prince. And in just a moment, you'll hear Mr. DeMille in a personal chat with Walt Disney. But now, I'd like to give a little friendly advice to the women in our audience. All those nice underthings you got for Christmas. You want them to stay dainty and fresh and new looking a long time, don't you? Well, why don't you do what Mother Browning suggested? Why don't you plan to give all those lovely, fragile things the care they deserve? Gentle Lux care. Keep a box of Lux flakes on your bathroom shelf. And after every wearing, take your nice underthings and plunge them into a big bowl full of Lux suds. Those soft, pure suds whisk away every trace of soil and leave your things dainty and new looking. There's no harmful alkali to hurt fine materials or fade delicate colors. In fact, Lux is safe for anything safe in water alone. Try it. Buy Lux flakes in the economical large size tomorrow. Now, Mr. DeMille. Picking up where we left off between the acts, here's Walt Disney to continue his animated conversation in a more serious vein. <laughs> You'll be sorry, Mr. DeMille. Tell me, just how old a story is Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs? Well, it's so old that no one knows when or where it was first told. Is it true that it wasn't published until the Grimm brothers came along? Yes, just about a hundred years ago. Jacob Grimm was a very learned man, a scientist. You'd hardly think he'd go in for fairy tales. But just as a hobby, he and his brother collected a lot of old folk stories and legends, put them into a book, and called the book Grimm's Fairy Tales. In their written form, Walt, fairy tales are supposedly only for children. But when you bring one to the screen, it captivates everyone. Age, language, race make no difference. What's the secret? Well, here's half an answer. Over at our place, we're sure of just one thing. Everybody in the world was once a child. We grow up. Our personalities change. But in every one of us, something remains of our childhood. You mean that's a common denominator? That just about sums it up, Mr. DeMille. The same level you speak of knows nothing of sophistication and distinction. It's where all of us are simple and naive, without prejudice and bias. We're friendly and trusting. And it just seems to me that if your picture hits that spot in one person, it's going to hit that same spot in almost everybody. So in planning a new picture, we don't think of grown-ups and we don't think of children. But just of that fine, clean, unspoiled spot down deep in every one of us that maybe the world has made us forget and that maybe our pictures can help recall. But when a picture maker turns philosopher, Mr. DeMille, it's time for him to quit. So thanks for your swell treatment of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Uh -huh. and good night. Good night. That was Walt Disney, whose magic turns a theater ticket into a grand adventure. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a word about our program for next Monday night. The past year has seen Errol Flynn rise to the heights of Hollywood stardom. In successive films like The Perfect Specimen, Robin Hood, and Dawn Patrol, he's proved himself a master of romantic comedy, adventurous melodrama, and straight dramatic roles. We hear this versatile and dashing gentleman next Monday night in the first of these hits, The Perfect Specimen. And co-starred, as she was in the picture, is another favorite, the delightful Joan Blondell. And so the Lux Radio Theater says goodbye to 1938. We who are behind the scenes are not alone in making these presentations possible. If our efforts have brought you pleasure, won't you remember that in the Lux Radio Theater is the means taken by the makers of Lux Flakes and Lux Toilet Soap to show their gratitude for your loyalty to these fine products. All of us then work together. And in 1939... Our goal is again your entertainment and your friendship. A year of greater joys to be shared with you in the Lux Radio Theater. From all of us goes the hope that the new year will light your hearts and homes with happiness and health. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Errol Flynn and Joan Blondell in Perfect Specimens. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Lois Tilford has appeared for courtesy of 20th Century Fox Studio, where he directed music for the new film, Kentucky. Your announcer has been Melville Roick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.